Welcome friends, welcome back to the discussion of terminologies associated with product. We will go on with this discussion for this session and probably the next one also, but till then we would be forming the complete almost the complete backdrop of uh, you know uh, aspects related to a product and then we will traverse into you know the management side basically wherein we would be focusing upon uh, the concepts related to product in depth cron concepts which we would be focusing upon you know uh, which 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 actually uh, drive product management so so we'll be going for that as well and and uh, till then just let's focus upon few more uh, terms for example product mix now you see it is related to a set of all products and items a particular seller offers for sale. Now you see again look at uh, last session I ended with a note on Patanjali for example you know. So, so uh, if you would have visited a store of Patanjali for example just look at that store and you would realize what I am talking of and that is where you know that is where these you know all the products uh, they come into one uh, you know under one umbrella that is product mix and you see a mix can be characterized by a number of dimensions like width, length, depth, consistency I would be talking about this in detail and then line we have talked about yes that is which is very important part of a product mix structure. So, several lines then you know several lines in width and length in terms of line it is interesting we will talk about that because that is related to decision making that is related to foreseeing the type of customer that is related to categorizing the customer that is related to developing the specific message for specific customers and, and that part would be interestingly once again coming in front of us when, when we would be referring to a discussion on product in relation to other piece of marketing. Now, that is one of the most in, uh, interesting and one of my favorite discussions basically with, with marketing students. So, so, you see till then just keep these terms width, length, depth, consistency and, and those kind of elements in mind. And, and in the meanwhile please do study those there are several very good chapters in uh, uh, you know Philip Kotler's and Kevin Lane Keller's book of marketing management which we have continuously been referring to uh, as of now. Then another term which comes into being is product design. Uh, you see uh, if specifically someone thinks of design as a perspective there is a whole lot of a specific course associated with that and if not that you know at least 4, 5, 6 hours of discussion can go into product design because starting from the personality and persona perspective which we have carried forward till now design encompasses almost everything. So, product design is the totality of features, features we have talked about in attributes remember that that affect the way a product looks, appearance feels and functions to a consumer. At this moment I am thinking of eyeglasses for example, I have one in my hand let me you know wear it for a while. Although I, I am unable to look clearly because it is a reading glass you know I, I cannot look clearly in the camera but, but still you can look at me clearly. Now you see this eyeglass is associated with looks I do not know how do, how do I look I, I do not look very good I, of course, but, but that glass looks good that, that is for sure and how it feels you know I, I feel comfortable when I read through these glasses and you see the functionality is definitely associated with reading glasses and it, it, it is comfortable when I wear it you know it, it 
does not bothers me and so on. So, just just a simple kind and why I mentioned about eyeglasses is not just because I, uh, because I am having it in my hand at this moment, eyeglasses are part of a very composite and integrated part of our lives and I have talked about this earlier as well probably in, in a different course, but, but uh, I think in integrated marketing communication when, when I refer to that. But uh, you see, if many of you or any of you is you know using glasses just just think of it as a product and then watch some you know messages by lens card go to some lens card showroom ask someone to show you an eyeglass and then you would exactly realize what we are referring to in terms of design you see it offers functional and aesthetic benefits if it doesn't looks good at you it won't look good at you you see even if I tell you, you know that, that this particular shape looks good at you, you, you might not feel happy about it until unless you feel comfortable wearing that particular glass in front of the mirror actually. And that is why you know they always tell you to, to watch yourself. For example, you wear, you, you are trying a pair of shoes somewhere in uh, you know a shop and then they would take you to in front of the mirror kept at a you know um, foot uh, height basically wherein you would watch yourself wearing a pair of shoes there, how it looks on your feet. So, aesthetic benefits and appeals to both consumers rational and emotional sides. Now, that is where you see a product should be associated with the rational side of the com, uh, consumer, you know when, when he feels in terms of and, and we talked about user. Uh, referent benefits and and uh, you know uh, you know uh, we we have referred to attributes related to benefits of uh, a product and so on so remember that discussion as well when we are talking of rationality associated with a product design and emotional side of a product design we have talked about these terms earlier as well so uh, we will keep on uh, talking about the elements of design in due course of time and i would be talking of you know product related creativity and processes I would be using examples like beautiful headlamps of uh, automotives uh, which actually give a very interesting look to a, a particular automotive basically. Many a times you know uh, when headlamps are very simple that look is not there when, when you give them a round shape or when you give them you know and, and, and these days uh, I have I have found that automotive manufacturers are. Uh, you know interestingly focusing up on uh, uh, the shapes of tail lamps basically it, it was unheard of earlier but but they are now focusing you know uh, extensively in, in detail on as far as particular shapes of tail lamps as well so so we will we'll talk about that and uh, automotives is is a large example of uh, wherein you know uh, several elements of design are focused upon intensely then comes in product variety and uh, you see just to give you a clue when you look at uh, marketing mix of McCarthy uh, in the same book which we have been referring to there is you know uh, a description of 4 P's given in that uh, marketing mix chart and these terms you will find there in under product category wherein you would find a specific reference to product variety which refers to the number of different classifications of goods carried in a particular merchandising unit a very plain and simple and scientific kind of a definition but again product variety and variation is deeply associated with product line and then subsequently family and class and so on because we have gone through this kind of a discussion in hierarchy as well so you see whenever we talk of variety and variation so so that talks about and if we are talking of variety in terms of different kinds of products then it may refer to width as well I will be coming back to the discussion on width and those kind of things later on. But here that is why you see I, I uh, thought that it should be uh, pertinent for us to look into terms before going into the strategic uh, perspective of product and brand management because at that particular stage when we are using these terms in sequence or many a times interchangeably also we do not get confused, uh, we can always refer to these uh, videos and, and uh, the 
references which we are using so that at that particular stage we are clear in terms of the management perspective of this subject. Then comes in quality and you see it is related to the totality of features and characteristics of a product or service that bear on its ability to satisfy stated or implied needs. How do you feel about the product basically? You see does it uh, you know uh, solves the purpose? Is it related to uh, meeting your expectations especially against what you know you are paying for that in terms of direct price, time, you know search time and emotional aspect and so on. So, it is a whole lot of you know again an array of things which have to be considered in terms of uh, quality. And just to give you a demarcation basically for example, you go to uh, an up market restaurant and of you know you uh, you request for let us say a, you know ask for a samosa uh, uh, you definitely would be expecting the uh, kind of freshness the kind of you know uh, methodology or the process through which that samosa would uh, be prepared in consonance with that particular restaurant and they may put up a price relative to that. But when you are purchasing that samosa from uh, a local shop you know on the roadside shop uh, you know uh, the in, in wherein it is sold as street food you might not think in terms of many things you you might focus upon the kind of taste it may offer and that is all. So, that is what street food is uh, you know known for you know in, in most of the times it is just the taste and it is just what is happening around you. So, that is the perspective when you go to an up market big shopping mall you expect different kind of uh, you know a response from, from that ambience. When you go to a big huge uh, you know mega mall or sorry uh, should I say you know multiplex and you watch movie there you are paying 300, 400 rupees per ticket there. So, then you expect several kinds of things you know you expect the sound, the clarity, the scene, the scenario and so on. But, but if you are watching the same movie in your own home settings basically and, and uh, you know it has a relative pricing also. So, so you do not mind you know when, when distortions and disturbances are coming from all around you because you cannot do uh, much about that and so on. So, you see that is where quality perspective comes in. Why is it useful? It is useful because as I said I, I hinted upon relative pricing associated with quality and then there are several production processes associated with producing a particular kind of a quality. Then there are several uh, elements of human resource associated with producing a particular kind of a quality and so on and whole lot of and uh, whole lot of a differentiation in terms of customers and target customers and, and uh, price premiums and so on emanates from there. It must justify you know everything must justify the relative quality which a product offers a 5 rupees 10 rupees pen you do not expect much beyond writing nicely, but if you are spending let us say 500 rupees on a pen you expect much more other than the looks and we can keep going on and on about as far as these things go. Product features we have already talked about slightly in terms of when we refer to uh, you know refer to attributes. So, you see but features are demarketing characteristics of a product you know a features of a car, a features of uh, features of uh, uh, an eye you know eyeglasses, uh, features of uh, shoes you know how, how uh, it, it looks what is the you know the aspects associated with it and so on. And there again as I as I said there are several stages wherein strong overlap between the terms would be fee, uh, would be felt for example, design has a has an intense relationship with as far as the features go. Then form product form you see structure basically and structure matters a lot and then uh, I will keep uh, going on with several examples, but, but uh, you understand what I wish to say here when, when I talk of form. Then comes in one of the most important elements associated with products packaging. 
it is a whole lot of a science, it is a whole lot of an art associated with product and product management. Just to give you a clue, IKEA Furnitures focuses upon rectangular boxes as packaging and whole lot of a production uh, philosophy you know they have is around those rectangular packaging that rectangular uh, you know uh, uh, packaging art basically wherein they imagine their products to be dismantled and packaged into rectangular boxes whichever shapes the products may carry at the end of the day. So, that is where you know because uh, that is how they you know uh, they uh, design their production processes, their transportation processes, their, their stacking processes, you know, go downs and distribution processes, and so on. It's it's a very interesting uh, movie on on uh, you know kind of uh, film on IKEA furnitures available on the web. You can watch that. You will realize you know that 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 whole uh, you know that that puts up a whole perspective into a different array actually. And then many a times packaging becomes the uh, statement by itself. So, that actually complements advertising. Many a times packaging is related to information. So, packaging is an you know imbi or should I say imbued you know infused part of a product's character intensity. So, packaging includes all the activities of designing and producing the container for a product the, the exterior and packages might have up to 3 layers for example, tomato ketchup comes in a bottle primary package inside a cardboard box secondary package shipped in a corrugated box shipping package and so on containing dozen bottles in a cardboard boxes and so on and and and, and you see uh, talking of tomato ketchups it is very important for those ketchups to reach safely uh, to the customer and so on. So, so packaging definitely is associated with protecting the product while shipping and transportation. If those products are delicate for example, sophisticated machines you know high end electrical equipment. So, definitely that matters too much when in terms of packaging the material and so on. Laptops, sophisticated machines in terms of you know when they, they are shipped to you. So, that again matters a lot uh, basically. So, so you see packaging holds lots many clues in association with the uh, you know product promotion, product support, product transportation, distribution. Uh, production processes whole of you know as far as supply chain management also I would not enter into that domain, but, but there is a clue to you and definitely associated with uh, you know whole lot of a marketing exercise. I will be going into that uh, those details with lots of examples later on as well. So, then comes in warranties. See, these are formal statements of expected product performance by manufacturer. It gives assurance. Warranties are not just that you know someone is extending warranty. This is rela related to the statement that the product would stand by. Today, if if I say that there is no product, you know there is a product which is not available uh, with any warranty, you would you would hesitate, because then what is the commitment definitely the product itself is the commitment from the side of the manufacturer, but warranty is an assurance actually. For example, an insurance policy as a product does not gives you uh, you know an assurance of settlement in the time of need would you buy that no. So, that is the perspective associated with warranties you see products under warranty can be returned to the manufacturer or designated repair center for repair, replacement or refund whether expressed or implied warranties are legally enforceable also and and whole lot of a world surrounds you know this 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 term in terms of product assurance because many products you know they uh, go through several kinds of uh, teething problems in terms of usage and pro and the customer is assured because he knows that there is warranty so customer keeps on 
uh, you know, uh, talking to the service station about and, and because that is under warranty service station is, is uh, you know, liable to serve the customer at his will, returns whenever, you know, uh, you want to return the product. So, there is an agreement between the manufacturer and the customer in terms of product returns also. And you would realize that again this is a very specific marketing exercise element when we talk of product and brand management. And you would realize that warranties, returns and these uh, elements they are part of brand strength also later on. So, so that we will talk about because uh, we would not be specifically referring to these elements when we will be talking of you know uh, uh, brand equity development. But for example, you are uh, you know going to a coaching institution to uh, you know uh, get an admission for a person for a boy young boy and a girl and, and uh, they want to get uh, you know through, through an uh, uh, entrance examination. Now, there cannot be a warranty or guarantee, but because, because you see it depends upon how hard they would work upon, but still they extend assurance. And nowadays due to uh, several you know uh, competitive elements associated with uh, these kind of services, many a times the coaching institutes they say that if in, within one week or 10 days you do not find the course up to the mark of your expectation or your you know it, it does not gels with you or you are unable to take the intensity of the course, you we will refund your fees and that is where you know returns, warranties and these kind of things they work. These are very important parts we all know that we are all consumers, we all watch it, but now I want you to think about these in terms of as marketers and not just consumers. Now, let us go towards a different slightly elaborative side when we talk of product development. We have talked of production, production line, now let us focus upon development. How design also we have mentioned, so how products are developed, conceived, developed and you know uh, carried forward. And this will again be very useful for us when we will talk about the strategic progression of a product's journey. For example, when we would be referring to the portion uh, of new product development. So, this, this term would come back to us. So, just watch it and, and you see product development is the stage involving engineering and design of the physical product or conceiving an experience for a customer. For example, I was watching this website of very well known uh, design company and somewhere I read there in the description that uh, they have designed entertainment or, or let us say play park for uh, young kids means uh, you know where, where the co you know it is such a community park wherein uh, the kids staying in their adjacent buildings they uh, just go there and play. Now, those kids are 3, 4 years, 5 years of age. So, this design company they not only focused upon the material of the products for example, you know seesaw, for example, you know uh, other uh, kinds of uh, you know uh, rides uh, or, or uh, the, uh, the equipment which they put in there for children to play there, swings for example. Now, the material, the, the uh, strength of the material and, and uh, not only being user friendly, but safe also and then the gadgets associated gadgets uh, and then looking into the uh, you know uh, behavior of those kids you know uh, how kids do behave when they go there they become naughty they become you know kind of uh, um, sort of they become aggressive. So, looking at that you know what kind of places they may get hurt and then to avoid that what kind of safety measures can be taken so that their joy can enhance and you know the safety can be improved. So, that is where you know product development if you look at that experience perspective through this kind of an example and product development definitely is a very very strong story in terms of uh, if you will look at it with the perspective of an automotive development for example, when Scorpio was developed all through and several you know motorbikes have been developed in due course of time. 
So, so we can we can look into those uh, as examples. We can uh, you know live with those stories, and uh, we can we can talk about this at length in terms of engineering and design of the physical product. So, you see, but it can be you know broadly along with several other things broadly be seen with uh, three perspectives which are uh, demonstrated here. And, and uh, I am not saying this is limited to this, but, but pertinent because uh, you know these, these perspectives would be strongly at the backdrop of our future discussions in due course of time. So, wherein first perspective is associated with rational planning, you see successful product development can be seen as the result of careful planning of a superior product for an attractive market then can be seen as you know the resultant of the execution of the that plan for a uh, by a competent and well coordinated cross functional team that operates well coordinated cross functional team for example the team which would have developed usage or let us say perspective around uh, usage of Lego toys or bricks. What kind of shapes can be made out of those bricks? There, there, there uh, is where I am talking of coordinated cross functional teams. And then you know senior management wherein you know they support that with their leadership abilities and that is how you know a product is well planned, implemented and appropriately supported becomes a success actually. So, that is where rational planning perspective comes into being. Then the second element which can be seen and uh, you see uh, this is again uh, taken from a research paper which, which can be fetched and the reference is given there. So, then another very important element as the author says uh, is related to communication web, communication among project team members, communication among project team members and with outsiders stimulates the performance of development teams. Thus, the better that members are connected with each other and with key outsiders the more successful the development process will be and we can think of about this element with reference to developing several kinds of mobile applications for example. For example, you know uh, several kinds of uh, one of my favorites is uh, uh, let us say uh, you know MS Office 365 for example. So, th they would have tried to understand several kinds of elements and they would have kept associated with so many you know uh, people from outside and from within and so on and then the developers would have gone through a whole journey of developing a successful product like MS Office 365. Just watch that and you would realize what I am talking of. Then comes in you know disciplined problem solving. I would uh, briefly talk about this and then I would come to you in the next session with problem solving perspective first and then carrying forward the discussion around the terms because you see this is one of the most important elements from which I wish to you know develop and build upon our next subsequent discussion. But just to just to uh, you know uh, bring a chord here and uh, to some to, to end up this uh, discussion you see disciplined problem solving is uh, when you know successful product development is seen as a balancing act between relatively autonomous problem solving by the project team and the discipline of a, a strong leader strong top management and an overarching product vision vision leadership problem solving perspective and the result is a fast productive development process and a high quality product concept or a product at the end of the day. So, when we talk of disciplined product solving, product solving perspective has to be focused upon very intensely uh, the sorry problem solving perspective have to be seen very intensely. So, you see 
what kind of a problem we are conceiving and how are we conceiving a problem that, that itself is a, pro a process. And once we have conceived the problem rightly, how are we trying to put up a product as a solution for that problem solving? That is what we would be focusing upon that would uh, make our future discussion more interesting uh, once we will you know live up to uh, an aspect of conceiving a problem. So, I will leave you with this word problem and I will come up with my next discussion starting with this word problem. By the way, till then just try to find out who has told you and when what is your problem. Till then, goodbye.